Hello, beautiful soul. I hope you're doing amazing. So today I want to address a very, very sensitive topic. Um, I want to talk to you about wool. So first of all, if you're a vegan, it might not even be like one of your options to go and buy something made with wool, whether it be like a coat or anything, anything made with either silk or wool or milk fiber, because yes, it exists. Um, it might not even be an option for you if you're a vegan. However, I still wanted to address this topic because I think a lot of people are a bit lost when it comes to wool. Like, is it eco-friendly? Is it ethical? What should I do? <laughs> help us, Leone. So I'm here to help you with that. Exactly that. most important thing to remember about wool or even silk is that we don't necessarily need to kill the animal to use the the product the wool in this case so uh, when it's leather or fur we need to take the life of the animal in order to have the the final product but to have wool we can only shear the the sheep right so we do not need to kill anyone <laughs> to have this product. So if you're a vegan, I understand you won't even eat um, uh, honey or nothing made with animal products. So I totally understand. If you're a vegetarian or if you just care about the animal, uh, animal rights, animal conditions, well, you might be willing to buy wool, but maybe it needs to be eco-friendly or ethical for you in order to buy it. Um, so... The, the second most important thing to know about wool is that it's really, truly high quality. It's incredible. It can last decades. So I don't know if you have, uh, if you have uh, ever had like a sweater made with wool or it's just knitted, but we actually think it's wool. But when we look at the, <laughs> at the label, it actually says that it's like, I don't know, rayon or acrylic and just a bit of wool. So these synthetic fibers, when they're trying to Im imitate wool, so in this case, like a, a woolen sweater, uh, they're very cheap. <laughs> like they're gonna peel like this. Uh, you're gonna wash it and wear it maybe once or twice and they're gonna peel. But wool, high quality wool does not do that. It's going to last especially like the higher qualities of wool, for example, cashmere, they're incredible. So that's the main thing we have to know about wool because when we invest uh, in a high quality product, as you might know, if you've been uh, hanging out with me for a bit, when we invest in high quality clothing, first we take care of them because we cherish them and we want them to last longer because probably we paid a bit more. For it right and second is since we are going to keep them longer the environmental and social and animal impacts are reduced right because they're spread across the entire life cycle of the garment so first the environmental impacts of wool uh, well the first thing is that it can produce a lot of methane right coming from the excrement of the sheep <laughs> so it, it sounds a bit funny or even ridiculous but that actually has a big environmental impact <laughs> so that's the first thing to consider um, also when the wool is not organic or is not ethical uh, the the farmers can actually use highly toxic and chemical uh, pesticides or insecticides and they don't just spray the cotton fields with it right it's not like cotton it's the animals so they will actually inject or spray or pour some highly toxic um, uh, liquids or anything to prevent pest so that is obviously very uh, harmful for the animals 
and for the planet. Um, so it does not happen all the time. I will get back to it when we talk about organic, uh, organic wool. Um, also, uh, wool is actually a very greasy fiber. So when you shear the sheep, you actually need to wash in depth uh, the fiber. So it requires a lot of water, a lot of um, degreasing agents, uh, a lot of energy. So all of this to um, make the fiber actually um, usable <laughs> for fashion or for furniture or anything for, for textile, right? Um, and on the ethical side, well, first, yes, the spraying or injecting or pouring of the toxic chemicals are not ethical at all. But also, uh, it's becoming less and less present in the industry, but some farmers still do it. So I will not go into details around this. It's very, very sensitive. Um, but actually, some farmers will actually cut um, a part of the skin around the peri perianal area on the sheep. And this is meant to prevent pest invasion. It is totally ridiculous. Research shows that we don't have to do that to prevent pest, but it's still a common practice. So less and less common, thankfully. Um, also another ethical problem with wool is that a lot of shearers, so the people who shear the sheep, are not paid by the hour. They're paid by volume. So what do you think is happening? They rush into the process and well, they're using like, a, it's a razor with a blade. So what do you think can happen? They can, uh, they can truly harm the, the sheep when they shear them. So it can create a lot of health problems for them. And do you think they're taken care of and sent to the sheep hospital? No, they're just left there and they suffer and they either heal or die. So this <laughs> is the reality around traditional conventional wool. So it's not every wool that, it, that is like this. And I deeply encourage you to make your own research when you buy a woolen product um, because a lot of certifications exist. Um, for us at Gaia and Dubos, we do have one piece uh, for now in the present moment. Uh, while I, I am filming this, we have only one piece made with, uh, with wool and it's a modular coat. Check it out, it's coming out next week. Uh, so it's a coat with recycled plastic lining that you can take off and wear the plastic lining as is, like a, as a kimono. Check it out, you'll see. But my point is, the wool is actually certified organic. So what does it, what does it mean? It means that the sheep are treated fairly. They have enough space to live. They have... Uh, well, they're actually fed just natural grass, not like transformed food that is maybe cheaper but more efficient. No, they can eat the grass, the green grass around them. They have sufficient space to run around and live. They're way more free than conventional wool. Uh, well, conventional wool animals. Um, so these two kinds of certifications exist. So the organic certifications will ensure that yes, they're treated more fairly, but mostly there is no chemicals uh, coming into the production, coming into the, the raising of the animals. So this ens ensures lower environmental impacts and lower animal impacts, right? They're treated more um, humanely. And the ethical certifications, maybe it's not like that the, they need to, to eat organic grass or anything, but at least we make sure that they uh, are raised in ethical conditions. And sometimes you can find some wool that is both certified organic and ethical. It's, it's quite rare. Um, in my mind, in my book, it's more important to find the organic certification. And here's why. 
if you're a farmer and you have I don't know 20 sheep I'm just I'm just saying uh, just a number from just a small a small uh, a small amount of sheep right and you have the willingness to raise them in an organic way you want your final product to be organic well what kind of person are you are you the <laughs> wealth oriented with no consideration for animal welfare person or you're the type of person who cares about your animals and who wants them to have um, good conditions and avoid chemicals um, so in my mind this is why organic should be more important the organic certifications if you have to choose or if you're just wondering if you're facing a product and it only has a, an organic certification but not an ethical certification well probably that the animals it's 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 mostly it's mo it's most likely that the animals will have had ethical living conditions right so i don't know if that makes sense um if you speak french or read french at least i go into depth um as well as well for any animal fibers i talk about leather and fur and silk and milk fiber so anything that involves animals i go into more depth in my book pour une garde-robe responsable so it's uh, for a responsible wardrobe if you don't understand french so that would be a good um, starting point for you to better understand the animal textile industry. Uh, so yeah, that's about that for today. I really hope it shed some light on your, <laughs> on your questions, on your hesitancy. Um, I really hope that you are more equipped to go and buy some more ethical or organic woolen products. And yeah, if you're interested, just uh, look at our, uh, look at our website. Our woolen organic woolen coat is coming out next week. Um, and yeah, let me know if you have any other questions. And as always, just help me spread the word about ethical, eco-friendly, sustainable fashion, slow fashion. So help me spread the word, share this video or this podcast with someone you love, someone who cares, or someone who'd benefit from hearing this. Um, if you're watching from YouTube, make sure you hit the like and the subscribe buttons. And if you're listening on the podcast, please, 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 pretty please, leave a five-star review. Uh, so all of these little things that you can do really help uh, spread the word about sustainable fashion. Um, and you can also grab your free ebook that I created just for you. So the links will be, uh, well, the link will be in the show notes right below. Um, and it's an ebook that teaches you 30 simple, uh, 36 simple, easy tricks that you can implement right now to reduce your eco and your social footprint through fashion. So go grab it now and I hope you enjoyed. I hope it serves you and let me know if you have any other questions. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day.